So we're going to be going on the dark side of Linux now. The things that I don't like so much about Linux, but you need to know about. And there's ways to avoid many of these things. And one of them is Wi-Fi in Linux. What devices are good? What ones are bad? Why some just won't work? So let's talk about it. So Wi-Fi and its drivers or lack thereof in Linux. It's one of those things that you really need to understand the differences between Windows and Linux. The short of it is on Windows, you have to install every driver into the actual operating system for it to work. And with Linux, it's all baked into one neat little kernel. So that's the layman's terms or the too long didn't watch of drivers when it comes to Linux versus Windows. This causes some issues because uh, the very first one is new Wi-Fi drivers really aren't accessible on older systems. You have to recompile the kernel with the new Wi-Fi driver to get those to work, which is a very complex task that most users aren't capable of doing. So the next thing is to actually upgrade the Linux kernel to the latest and greatest and pray that your device is supported. I've had experience in this realm because I bought an HP laptop almost right when it dropped and immediately the Wi-Fi driver did not work at all on a fresh uh, Linux installation with the latest kernel. I literally ended up waiting, you know, a, I think it was about a month or two for the next kernel revision to happen and when it dropped I was able to install it and my Wi-Fi started working. But there was a good probably month that that laptop had been on the market before it actually got Wi-Fi support. So that is a concern, especially when you're going to new hardware. That said, there are some older pieces of hardware that just don't have good Linux compatibility. Uh, a lot of the Broadcom Wi-Fi drivers have some issues here and there just because they have really weird feature sets or features associated with the devices themselves and Linux has a hard time really deciphering them because Windows, usually they load a third-party proprietary program that does a lot of extra crap. So I don't really fault Linux per se on this. It's more of a manufacturer problem. And that's just one of the problems that manufacturers have kind of thrown at Linux. The second problem that they have is they're inconsistent when it comes to what chipsets they put in models. So we've seen Dell was like the originator of this back in the early 2000s. Everyone was running around with Dell laptops. I was doing a lot of computer repair back in those days and they always had different components even though the damn model number was the exact same. You'd go to the driver website and you'd be like, okay, there's five different sound cards. Which one is it? Well, it's kind of like that in Wi-Fi form because a lot of times models of Wi-Fi cards end up having different chipsets which produce different results. That sucks, it just does. So you can buy one model and one person will install it and it'll work fantastic and they'll be like, this is great. And then a person will buy the exact same product, heck, probably from the exact same store on the exact same shelf and it'll have a completely different chipset even though it's the same model. So this is a thing in the Wi-Fi world, and I really wish the manufacturers would just stop this. Eh, but alas, here we are. So what do we do? Well, I went ahead and compiled a list of three models that I really like, that I haven't had any issues with thus yet. However, if you buy these models, I'm not saying it won't happen. Save the box install it, make sure it's all working right for you. And then if it's not, return it, get a different model because uh, that one probably had a bad chipset on it. It's still possible even on the models I'm about to give you. So with all that out of the way, we know the problems that exist on Wi-Fi drivers. The Linux team's done the best they can with the kernel to support as much of the Wi-Fi's out there, uh, Wi-Fi cards out there. But uh, at the same time, there's only so much they can do. At the end of the day, there's just going to be some bad apples. And like I said, most Broadcom drivers are the ones that really cause a lot of issues. However, people have gotten them work, and it's not to say all Broadcom's bad. It's just one that I see, I'm like, ugh, hopefully this will work. <laughs> but a lot of other drivers are actually pretty good.
So I'm going to walk you through my top three Wi-Fi drivers or Wi-Fi devices that I really, really enjoy using on Linux and that I've bought and, and used in the past for a variety of purposes. The very first is a cheapest one and also the lowest profile one. A lot of times when I'm hooking up Wi-Fi somewhere, it doesn't need to have like crazy good signal or a crazy long reach. So I usually use this little $12, $13 Wi-Fi card. I'll put it up here just so you can kind of see and I'll put in the description below links to it. This little guy is fantastic. You plug it in, plug and play, and it just all populates. I have yet to have this not populate on pretty much any Linux box. Now, a lot of people use Wi-Fi things to do monitoring or packet injection uh, using like Kali Linux or Tails or there's a variety of uh, penetration testing distributions out there. So if you're in that realm and you're wanting to use these for pen testing, um, just know it's a little bit of a mixed bag. You could get a really good chipset. You might get a bad chipset that won't do a great job with packet injection, packet monitoring, and those types of things. But for the average user, this card is pretty fantastic, has pretty awesome reach. However, there are better ones and alternative ones that I'm about to jump into. The second card is a name brand called TP-Link. Not the best name brand, but this one is actually pretty good for Linux. This card has a lot of good reviews. A lot of people on many Linux forums have recommended it. So if you're looking for an alternative from the Panda and still want to stay in that about that $15 realm, the TP-Link over here is a very good solution. However, on the TP-Link, it does not support AC bands, so it is a little slower and uh, you know it's not as good, but the reach I think is probably gonna be a little bit better than the Panda one. However, uh, mileage will vary as with any environment. And the last one on my list is the Alpha AC Wi-Fi card. This is one that actually comes with a long cable and it's actually the box that you could actually stick up on the wall if you need. It has a great range, very supported in Linux. So if you are on like the far end of your house and don't feel like doing like a, a Wi-Fi and mesh network or expanding your Wi-Fi, you're probably gonna want a card like this. It is great, however, it is a little pricey. These cards usually go anywhere between 30 and $60, depending on which one you end up settling on. Uh, but they usually have a very good track record when it comes to Linux. And those are really my top three cards that I recommend. However, if you do want to get involved and try and get your internal Wi-Fi working on like a laptop per se, the very first thing I always recommend trying is upgrading your kernel and trying one of the newer kernels because a lot of times if it's a new laptop, all you need is a kernel up update and it will start working. But with all that said, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support, make more videos like this one, consider visiting me on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video.